Hey guys, my name is Aceroth, and today I'm bringing you a search and destroy commentary. I do pretty well in this game, I go 10 and 1, uh, and I know that's not like fantastic by, I guess you could say, YouTube standards and no extras when it comes to search and destroy, but I feel like I did pretty well, and what I'm going to start doing with my commentaries and what I'm going to do with this commentary is I'm going to really break down my decision making a little more and talk about each thing that I do. Um, so I hope you guys like that. Let me know, give me some feedback, and let me know if that's the kind of thing that you want. Um, or if it's, or if you're looking for something else. Right off the bat, I'm gonna try to get a nice little spawn nade here. But as you can see, I kind of uh, ran the other way first, so I was a little late, didn't get a kill there, uh, unfortunately. But and there's this guy. This guy comes down the stairs every round, and I kill him every round. I don't know what he was thinking. Uh, here it might look like I'm camping, but I actually have my headset turned up, and I can hear a guy running towards me. Um, and one thing you want to be careful of, if, you're, if your opponents have headsets, and obviously you can't just tell if they do, but if you think they do, or if you're playing a competitive match or something, running ninja is very important, especially on a map like this with a lot of snow, because it, it's, it's very easy to hear people running from across the map when you've got a good headset turned up. So be careful about that, that's a good way to get killed. Uh, I, I heard that guy coming from, like, all the way back in their spawn, so... Uh, be wor be careful about that. So right here, I'm thinking, where can I best position myself to help my teammates out? I notice that nobody's in the roundhouse, so I go up there and I get that that kill right there. And that was uh, that was a little bit lucky because if I had done that a little later, then that guy might have seen me jumping through the window and he would have been able to easily clean me up. So I got through the window just in time. Uh, but that's an important thing to think about, especially in a game mode like Search and Destroy. Is just be aware of where your teammates are positioned and make sure you're covering the spots that are open. Okay, as we move on to round two here, uh, you'll see this spawn nade that I was talking about, and it's actually very effective. I throw it every time um, on this map when we're on offense, just because it's it's a nice way to get a quick kill. And let me let me show you exactly what I'm doing here. I'm about to pause the video. Okay, right here, I'm throwing this this grenade over here towards their spawn, towards the B bomb site, and what I'm trying to do is actually blow up the car that's right at the top of the hill there. Um, that is a high traffic area. People often run that way after they spawn on Search and Destroy or on any game mode, really. It's just particularly effective on Search and Destroy because everybody only has one life and you know that the whole team just spawned over there. So this is something that I would recommend trying out. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good way to get a first blood kill and it's a nice way to thin out their team early on. Uh, not to mention, when you blow up this car, um, then if your team decides to plant B, then you don't have to worry about them blowing up the car either. So it's definitely a great idea, so I'd recommend trying that out. Uh, as you'll see, I get a kill with it this round and the next round. I even got a hit marker on that one, so they're definitely running by there a lot. Um, another thing I want to talk about briefly, uh, while this, this is kind of, the, the rest of this stuff is kind of self-explanatory for a while, um, but I want to talk about kill streaks for Search and Destroy. Uh, obviously, it's it's going to be better to use lower kill streaks because it's not as easy to rack up high kill streaks in a game mode where people aren't respawning. Um, you know, I've seen people get dogs in Search and Destroy. Uh, I've got an SR-71 before. I don't think I've gotten dogs, but it's not something that happens very often, and it's usually much more beneficial to use something like the Spy Plane, uh, which I always run. And in this video, as you can see, I have Spy Plane, Napalm Strike, and Cobra. Uh, and that's pretty good, uh, but I actually don't like the Napalm Strike that much in Search and Destroy. I'd probably replace that for something like Counter Spy Plane, which is also very good. Uh, but yeah, keep the kill streaks low. Um, and I'll also talk a little bit about when to use them. You don't want to just throw all your kill streaks out there at the beginning of every round or as soon as you can after the after the you know sort of cooldown timer. Um, but I like to use one every round. Um, as you'll see in this round, eventually I use my Cobra. There's that. There's that first blood again. It's definitely a great spot. Um, there I use my Cobra, but I hold off on my Napalm Strike until the next round, and that's definitely something that uh, that I think is is good. I think that's advantageous because you don't want to just throw everything out there, especially if you're not going to be getting many kills with it. Um, I don't even remember if I get any kills with my Cobra or my Napalm, but I wouldn't be surprised if I don't. Uh, so yeah, it's it's definitely a better idea to save them because any advantage you can give your team in any given round is going to be really helpful in the long run because search and destroy is on such a round by round basis. It's very important to win each round because one round can make the difference. So if you throw all your kill streaks out on one round just to win that one round, then you don't have any advantage for the following rounds. Anyway, uh, well let's back up. Let's look at what just happened for a minute. So I'm walking up the staircase and then I see the claymore out of the corner of my eye and bam. 
Uh, so I get hit by this. I'm lucky I survived this because I'm running lightweight and not flak jacket. Uh, but now I have a decision to make. Um, first of all, claymores serve two primary purposes, at least for me. Uh, one is to obviously guard my flank uh, and hopefully get a kill if someone's trying to run over there. But another is just to alert you of someone's presence. If, if you get a hit marker with a claymore, then you know that someone's over by wherever you placed your claymore. Uh, so in my mind right now, I'm thinking, okay, so this guy placed a claymore here. Uh, and now I've tripped it and he's gotten a hit marker so he knows I'm here. So I don't want to just charge blindly into roundhouse and try to outgun him. Even if I could do that, that's not the best choice. Uh, so you'll see, as you, as you saw before, what I decide to do is back off for a little bit. I'm trying to either lure him out or just give it some time so he thinks, okay, well he's not coming around this time. So that's, that's the reason I didn't charge right in there and you should be aware of that with claymores as well. Alright, getting back to where we were. Uh, let's move back. Alright, now here is after I've waited a little while and I've decided to come in and notice that I'm still kind of cautiously checking roundhouse. I don't like to sprint a lot because uh, you make a lot of noise, but then I realize that it, it seems to be pretty clear so I'm not quite as concerned about it. And then I find him and get the final Good kill. So the There you round. go. Let's move on to the next round. And now, as you notice, I'm 10 and 0 right now, and the title says it's the search and destroy round where I go 10 and 1. So I'm not really going to do that well the next round. And I make a mistake that I'm going to point out to you guys so that you can uh, not make the same mistake. And it's it's the same mistake that I nearly made in the first round. I didn't really mention it all that much there. Uh, by the way, that's a pretty good spawn nade right there too. Uh, but I threw it a little too early, so they 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 wouldn't have been there yet. Um, and you also just want to make sure that you're not by the car because if you're by the car then the same thing can happen to you they can throw a nade up there and there's really nothing you can do even if you have flak jacket that'll often kill you all right so i call in my napalm strike unfortunately theater mode doesn't let you know uh doesn't let you see where i called it in but uh as you'll notice it you know i'm really not the authority on napalm strike placement i really didn't do very well with that one um it didn't it didn't get me any kills all right but uh, coming up here is right about where i make my mistake i see them on the or I see two guys on the UAV and then I jump over this ledge so I'm gonna stop here uh, what I should have been thinking about was how I know that at least one person on their team is using ghost um, and I don't know if he's still alive or not and there may even be multiple people using ghosts so I should have tried to head the two guys off um, the other way where I would have had a lot of cover but right here I'm going out into the open with a submachine gun which is usually not the best idea I know that one of them is a sniper in fact the the guy with ghost was sniping so I should expect him to have a sniper rifle um, and then the other guys are likely using assault rifles because many many people do so going out in the open here was definitely not the right move um, and you'll see that it, it it comes back to bite me so here I am I decide at the I decide too late as you can see to uh, to try to run away and it doesn't work out uh, so I'm out of the round, but I'm going to continue this video because uh, I'm also going to speed it up a little because this is this is actually my brother playing. I was playing with my brothers and some of my friends, um, and it gets a little campy. Uh, but before you guys get on him too much about that, um, in, in this situation where there's I think I think there's only one guy left on the enemy team, really the the appropriate strategy is since we're on defense. You just you just have to make them make the move because there's no reason that you should be making any moves. Uh, if you're on defense and you've got more guys, but as you can see, our guys are kind of falling off. Um, so once they get whittled down to one, my brother's just going to kind of wait for this guy to make a move, listen on his headset, see if he can hear a plant or hear him walking around. Um, and as you'll see, it kind of works out for him. Uh, he's in a pretty good spot right here. He can he has a nice line of sight right to the bomb through these barrels. Uh, but what he does here, I was trying to tell him, obviously he can't hear me because I'm dead, but I was trying to tell him not to shoot through there because I didn't think he would get it. But he gets a lucky kill there off the other guy's claymore. Uh, or maybe it was one of our teammates' claymores. I don't really know. Uh, so it works out. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys that line of sight through those barrels. It's definitely a good way to watch A. Um, and I was also I just wanted to mention that you really don't need to be aggressive when your team is on defense. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys like the video. I'm trying to get back to some sort of regular commentating. Uh, or standard, I don't know what you want to call it, just the the most common type of commentating where I break down my gameplay. Uh, let me know if you guys liked it, let me know if you have suggestions, 
uh, for more series, or if you don't like this style of commentary, let me know. Uh, and I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, definitely feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks.